Hello friends, today we're going to explore the whimsy gothic aesthetic. I have thought about doing aesthetic trend oriented videos before with so many different trends, but honestly, none of them spoke to me quite like this one. This aesthetic is already very aligned with my personal style. There's so much to love about it, and I am so excited to break down what this style is, put together some outfits, and just analyze its larger cultural significance. We're getting a little academic, a little intellectual, sharing thoughts in this one. To start, what is whimsy goth? In short, it's a style that's a mix of gothic, mystical, and bohemian influences all within sort of a 90s style framework. So basically, it's the 90s TV show witch aesthetic. The official name for this style is whimsy gothic. It's often shortened to whimsy goth, which I do think rolls off the tongue a little bit better, but whimsy gothic is definitely more accurate because the style is not so much inspired by the goth subculture as it is by gothic art and architecture and the associated era of like the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. It's not just gothic though, hence the whimsy part, which speaks to the witchy and bohemian sensibilities. The name whimsy gothic, by the way, was coined by Evan Collins, co-founder of the Consumer Aesthetics Research Institute, which is, according to its website, an online community dedicated to developing a visual lexicon of consumer ephemera from the 1970s until now. They note that the peak popularity of this aesthetic was the late 1980s to the late 1990s, and the entry also says that they originally titled it Whimsical Mystical Gothic Celestial, which I agree is too long, but it clearly states exactly what this aesthetic is. The entry also says this style was popular in furniture, product, and interior design, and I think it's definitely coming back in interior design and decorating right now as well. Style inspiration for this look reaches back even further than the 80s and 90s because at that time, in peak popularity, they were drawing a lot from the 70s. Stevie Nicks is, of course, the blueprint for this style, and in the 90s, Lisa Bonet and Anna Sui are also defining influences. Because this style was popular, popular in consumer products and branding, we also see it a ton in 90s media, like movies and TV shows, such as Charmed, Practical Magic, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, along with non-fantastical characters like Phoebe Buffay from Friends. Elements of this style were also huge on Tumblr in the 2010s. These are all images I reblogged on Tumblr at that time when I was in high school and college, and it's also been popular among celebrity style icons like Florence Welch, FKA Twigs, and Helena Bonham. Carter from before the 2010s into the present. Now in the 2020s, TikTokers like Sophie Seddon, Figs, Amber Triana, MJ, and a Gemini Fairy continue to inspire. The Whimsygoth aesthetic's popularity is remarkably consistent. Women truly never get tired of dressing like witches. So now that we've discussed the origins, let's get into the weeds a little bit more about exactly what makes up this aesthetic. Silhouettes seem to typically be pretty long, flowy, and fully covered, although there are more figure-hugging or revealing looks that definitely still qualify. It seems very versatile for however much of your body you want to show. Hallmark silhouettes seem to be flare sleeves, long skirts, tie fronts, and a generally layered, less defined, softer shape with some waist definition. Although again, none of these qualities are necessities to any given outfit in this style. Materials like knits, crochet, silk, transparent layers, and beaded details create that eclectic, free-spirited, bohemian vibe, and rich, luxurious, vintage-inspired materials like velvet, faux fur, and lace bring in that sense of dark, historical, gothic influence. Plus, because of the overarching 90s casualness. Denim, leather, and corduroy all make appearances as well. It's sort of that blend of all three that makes up this distinct aesthetic. Colors tend to be dark, muted, and earthy, but with a sense of richness. Jewel tones, which I think encapsulate all of those qualities, are probably the strongest color palette in this style. We see a lot of deep blue and purple, burgundy red, and dark emerald green. Warm, earthy colors are also prominent, like gold, creams, browns, neutrals in general, and of course, the most popular popular color of them all is black. There is definitely room for variation in this though. We definitely see brighter shades styled and even light colors come in as accents. Patterns and graphic motifs might be the most specific element of this aesthetic. The style uses some very particular hallmark patterns. Anything celestial is of course the most obvious prominent pattern. We love a star, a moon, a sun, any reference to the astrological. In keeping with that witchy natural world theme, nature motifs are also big, be it plants, mushrooms, 
mushrooms, bugs, animals, crystals, or the night sky. And of course, some more subtly bohemian patterns like paisley, which I'm wearing right now, floral or patchwork are also present. Finally, there is the element of styling, which plays a big role in bringing this aesthetic together because this is a highly layered, accessorized style. Stacks of layered jewelry, long necklaces, and dangling earrings, especially made with crystals or stones, totally brings these looks together. Like I already mentioned, layering is also big to create that sort of flowy, undefined shape. And really any flowy accessory that can be added, like a long slouchy bag, a hair scarf, or a scarf around the neck, will build up the look even more. These free-flowing looks do tend to be grounded though with something like a practical boot to keep it down to earth. All right, now that we know the ins and outs of the style, we're experts at this point, let's put together some outfits. All right, first up, we're going for that very cute, girly, 90s, Sabrina the Teenage Witch type look. One garment I haven't mentioned, but do see a lot of in this style is overalls. So I have these little black short denim skirtalls, very 90s, and then this sparkly flare sleeve dark purple shirt. I mean, everything about that fits the brief enough said. Then I just topped it off with some sort of 90s-ish black boots and these amazing little moon earrings. For our next look, we're keeping that same shirt, but this time going into a more bohemian direction with this blue midi skirt, still very 90s, but a little more flowy. Then I just wanted to add this scarf just to make it even more flowy. And also these colors are perfect for the style and too gorgeous not to use. Then I figured this outfit was a little impractical. So I decided to go for more of a cool weather whimsy goth look by adding this corduroy jacket, very 90s slash 70s, very cozy earthy vibes. And then finally, this little fluffy black hat, which is slightly off course, but I feel like the shape is still sort of 80s slash 90s. And obviously this isn't really supposed to look like fur, but the fluffiness is also a nod to those furry elements in the whimsy gothic look. I think this outfit is really cute and very whimsy gothic at all stages though, from the original base to this final almost wintry look. Next up, I wanted to do a little tied up button up look as an easy take on the tie front top look. And this purple paisley was absolutely perfect. Underneath, I have this crochet lace top, kind of vintagey and kind of boho at the same time. And then on the bottom, we have a black midi skirt to keep it dark. Finally, for those 90s touches, we have a claw clip in the hair and some Doc Martin boots. And then to add in another somewhat slouchy detail, this green tote bag. Honestly, the bag I wish I had for this look was not this tote bag, but this this specific bag right here. You know this bag, we all remember this bag from the 2010s, and actually I not only had one then, but kept it around in my closet at my parents house all this time, and it's still there right now. I should have brought it with me, I wish I had it for this video. Please comment if you had or still have one of these bags. All right, next we're going more full gothic. I had to bring out this velvet midi dress with bell sleeves, very 70s, very whimsy gothic. And then I layered this corset over the top for that sort of dark yet feminine gothic renaissance vibe. I didn't want it to look too full on gothic though. So I added this leather jacket to make it much more casual and 90s. And then this white hair bandana to make it a little more bohemian. Pro tip, if you ever wanna make an outfit look more naturey, free spirited, hippie-ish, just throw on a hair bandana. It never fails. Okay, next we're going back to something super simple and a little more modern. This is really just like 90s inspired with the button up chambray dress, black t shirt, and docks. But again, we add the hair bandana and now it's just a little more granola witchy. Plus the dark muted color palette really keeps it in with the whimsy gothic realm, even if it's very subtle. And then I also wanted to add a knit cardigan, another popular piece in this style. So I added it here to give this outfit a little more of a cozy fall time touch. Finally, I had to style my patchwork dress I made myself, of course, considering all the patchwork we saw in this style. I just layered it over this black turtleneck to give those a dark fall witchy vibes, and then layered this black and white midi skirt on the bottom to give more of that length and flowy shape, which brings in that more bohemian vibe. Finally, I had to add this tiny beaded bag, which is too small to be practical, but is absolutely gorgeous and magical and is giving magical whimsical witch vibes in every way. All right, finally, I just have a lot of thoughts about the positives of this aesthetic, the negatives, and why I think it's particularly popular right now. So let's get into the analysis. 
First, what do I think is positive about this style and it being on trend? One, I think it is very accessible and inclusive. It's broad, so you can really wear whatever version of it works for you. You can make it as casual, practical, comfortable, and fully covered as you want to. I think there are many other aesthetic trends that will just not work for most people's lifestyle because they are physically uncomfortable or psychologically uncomfortable if they are very revealing or just very out there. I like that you can do a statement making or more revealing version of this aesthetic, but it's not integral to the style. It's also very thriftable, being A, based in the 90s, and B, made up of a lot of basics, which obviously makes it more affordable, more sustainable, and also easier to style with clothes you might already have. The fact that it includes a lot of basics, vintagey pieces, and muted colors also means the pieces are more classic and will probably last a lot longer in your wardrobe. You'll be able to use them more often for more different situations, they won't go out of style as quickly Quickly and you won't get sick of them as quickly, as evidenced by the fact that variations of this style have been popular in waves for decades on end at this point. This is all to say this style is quite budget-friendly, sustainable, comfortable and practical for lots of different lifestyles and body types, while still being fun, expressive, and beautiful. Also, every aesthetic does have values attached to it, and while I don't think you need to practice a certain lifestyle to wear certain clothes, the values that are attached to this aesthetic are just kind of like slow living, being connected to the earth, feeling powerful as a woman, and just making life feel a little more romantic and magical. And those are all things I can 100% get behind. But of course, no trend or subculture is without its flaws, and I also want to talk about some of the negatives of this aesthetic. Firstly, as much as I think this style has the opportunity to be more inclusive, like any trend rising in the mainstream, it definitely still centers skinny white women, especially when you think about the media so often referenced in this aesthetic. It is just an endless list of skinny white women from the 90s. There's also the fact that just the idea of the bohemian look, you know, it's eccentric, it's adventurous, it's worldly, it always has the potential to cross into cultural appropriation. Thankfully, as far as I can tell, the current whimsy aesthetic does not seem to have this issue the way boho of eras past did. I'm looking at you, 2010s. But I will say the sort of witchy, spiritual, astrology and crystals lifestyle that is also on the rise and is definitely associated with this aesthetic definitely has some issues with appropriating non-Western spiritual symbols or traditions. Finally, let's talk about why people love this style, why it's particularly on trend lately. First off, who among us doesn't want to be a cool girl with magical powers? I mean, I want to be a witch, duh. And any fashion that makes me feel like a witch, I'm on board with. But okay, let's get more specific. Why do we all want to feel like witches these days? First, I think it's nostalgia for all that 90s witch media we consumed as kids and are now old enough to actualize via fashion. I also think the general pendulum swing back from the minimalism of the 2010s makes this very rich, decorative, maximalist style all the more appealing. And of course, anything trending in the past three years has to do with our good old friend COVID-19 the novel coronavirus, I don't know if you've heard of her, and how it forced us to A, spend a lot more time at home, hence the desire for cozy, stimulating, luxurious at-home spaces, and B, put us face-to-face -face with our own mortality and the fact that our elected public servants don't really give a shit if we live or die. That can make life feel pretty bleak, makes you feel pretty powerless, definitely could prompt many people to seek out escapism via fantasy. I also think it's super interesting that this particular subgenre of witchy fashion isn't high fantasy. It's very much like the realistic fiction of that 90s media where they're just everyday people in the real world who happen to have witchy magical powers. It's almost like now, everyday, normal, real life, pre-pandemic, is part of the escapist fantasy. It also helps us make our regular real lives that many of us have been forced to continue living despite the horror of the world around us a little more pleasant. I think this is a notable contrast with cottagecore, which peaked sort of during the height of the pandemic and lockdown times, because that was sort of all about romanticizing life at home and spending time in nature and making do with what you have. Whereas now, because we are no longer forced to, and many of us no longer have the option to just stay at home and spend time in nature, this aesthetic trend is better suited to idealizing just going about your everyday life. I also think beyond being escapist through the idea of fantasy, the idea of witchiness also gives us a sense of empowerment. I mean, they literally have powers. That's like 
their whole thing. So this style can help us feel like we're in our own little cozy witchy movie world, but also feel a stronger sense of self-efficacy, boldness, and like we have power over our own lives. All right, guys, please tell me your thoughts in the comments on any part of this little dive into the whimsy goth aesthetic trend, anything interesting you learned or anything you'd like to add. I am not an expert and I'm sure I missed some things, so I would love any other insights from you wonderfully intelligent viewers. I would also like to recommend my recent witchy outfits video. If you like the style in this video, you will love the style in that video. You can watch it right here. Oh my god, also, I almost forgot to tell you. I heard, if you like the video, leave a comment. Share this with someone in your life who's interested in internet aesthetics. Watch another video, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Every time you put on a whimsy goth outfit, you will gain one new magical witchy power.